Dr. Christopher West here, the Theology of the Body Guy. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to distinguish authentic sexual spontaneity from its counterfeit, how one lifts our souls and bodies to the heavens, and how the other leads to despair. Let's take a look. Hey, if you're new to this channel, we're all about showing you how our earthly bodies reveal heavenly divine mysteries. If you want to cut through all the sexual confusion in this world and grow deeply in what it means to be human, you're going to want to subscribe to this channel. And hey, let's compel YouTube to get the gospel out there. Subscribing, liking, clicking the notification bell, leaving a comment, sharing these videos, all of that helps the algorithm to get these videos out to more and more people. Thanks for your help. So we're continuing our series looking at the questions in my book, Good News About Sex and Marriage. We are on page 88. If you want to follow along, there's a link below where you can get your own copy of the book. We're looking at question 9 from chapter 5, where someone says, Doing things the moral way sure does seem to take away the spontaneity. Why can't even married couples just go with the passion of the moment? So this becomes the platform from which I launch into a discussion about the difference between authentic spontaneity in a sexual relationship and its counterfeit. We've spoken a lot in these videos through this book about the need for a total paradigm shift in order to understand the truth and meaning of sex. About the need to look at God's plan in the beginning, before sin twisted it all up. And our need for redemption, the redemption of our very bodies and our sexuality in Jesus Christ. If a husband and wife spontaneously follow their disordered passions, their love for each other is going to be overshadowed by self-seeking. But the more we allow Christ into our disordered passions, asking him to redirect them, the more we experience an inner transformation and the more the desire to make a sincere gift of ourselves to our spouse will well up from within us and with an intensity much more refined and noble than mere lust could ever arouse. Couples absolutely should follow this spontaneity of passion and abandon themselves to it entirely. For in doing so, as I say, They'll abandon themselves spontaneously according to the demands of authentic love. I once heard it explained this way. Anybody can walk up to a piano keyboard and spontaneously bang on the keys and make meaningless noise. That's like the spontaneity of lust. But a concert pianist can also walk up to a piano keyboard and spontaneously tickle those keys in such a way that our souls are lifted to the heavens. That's the spontaneity of authentic, chaste, marital love. And just as it takes a long time of sacrifice and discipline and training to become a concert pianist who can make beautiful music, it also takes a lifetime of sacrifice and training and formation to become the lovers we are all created to be. My brothers and sisters, not everyone, obviously, is called to be a concert pianist, but everyone is called by Christ to learn what it means to love as he loves. Christ is our piano teacher here, if you will. And maybe some of us, we have to go back to basics and start with Mary had a little lamb, just a few notes on the keys. Well, okay. Be humble enough to say, that's where I need to start. That's going to be more beautiful than the grating of lust that's just meaningless banging on the keys. Start with Mary had a little lamb, and then let Christ take you beyond that, and beyond that, and beyond that, to the point that you become a professional lover. The destiny of every human being is precisely that. Lord, teach us how to make beautiful music with the language of our bodies. My brothers and sisters, I have so much more to share with you about how to make this beautiful music and what it means to grow in loving as Christ loves with our bodies. And I do share so much more in the courses I teach for the Theology of the Body Institute and in the ongoing formation I offer our patrons. 
Check out the links below to learn more about both. And until next time, may our eyes continue to open to who we really are.